Hello, everyone. Today we'll go over homework nine. The first exercise we'll be covering is two. We are asked to consider the function f of x, where x is the date as an input of the function, and f of x, the value that we get back, is the price of gold rounded, and it is our output. Now, the question is, is the function f of x one to one? The answer is no, but here the most important part is the justification and understanding why that is the case. The idea is that a given date, the pri a given week rather, the price of gold might start low at a price of A dollars per pound, then increases to A plus two dollars per pound the next day, but at the end of the week it starts falling again to a plus three, a plus two, and it falls all the way to a, but it doesn't have to go all the way back to the original one. As long as I have two values that are the same in two different dates, then we have that the function is one to one. Also, we had that the price of gold is rounded down. That implies that if a given day the price of gold has not oscillated much, it is within two decimals of the previous day, then the rounding down will probably be the same. And hence the price that we get back as the value of the function of f of x will be the same. And hence we'll have two different dates, the same value. Hence this function, it is not one to one. We do, it can be for a small amount of time, but generally a function that represents price over time because the prices oscillate will not be a one to one function. Now, for exercise four, we're given a function, a linear one, where x uh, represents the run scored and f of x, the games won. We are asked to find the inverse and then what is the inverse of 100? And let's start by finding the inverse. The process is the following. We said the formula y is equal with the formula of the function. That is the first step. The next step is we proceed by solving for x. So I'm gonna isolate x. That will give me y minus 81 is equal with 0.1x. We either divide by 0 0.1 or multiply by 10, however you prefer to see this as. And now that we have isolated x, the next step is we change the variables. The previously y will become the x and the previously x will become the inverse function. So first step again, we set it, y is equal with the formula of the function, we're looking for the inverse. The next step is to solve for x. And the last one after we solve for x and x is fully isolated, we make the x be the fun inverse function and the previously y b is now our x. So that is for part A. For part B, first of all, let's do the calculation. F inverse of 100, that is 10 times 100 minus 810. This gives us a thousand minus and 110, which is 190. Now let's see, the original function was accepting numbers of runs scored and it was giving back, the output was the games won. That implies that for the inverse function, these things are inverse. The previously output, it is now the input. That is that in order to win 100 games, 190 numbers of runs are scored. The previously output is now the input. So the 100, it translates as the previous output of the function, of the original one. And the now output translates as the previous input. Hence, what is f to the minus one of 100, which is 190, is the value of runs 
scored when a hundred games are won. The number rather than the value. That is all for exercise four.